if they're just the impressions of what you guys were able to do offensively on Saturday? Uh, well, at times we moved the ball very well um, and had moments where we played well, just weren't able to be consistent enough through the course of the game to to do enough to help us win the game, you know, finish the game out. Uh, and it wasn't one play or, you know, uh, one, one particular series. It was, you know, a, a cumulative effect of a play here or there against a, a, such a quality team um, in, in a tough environment that you had to almost play pretty almost near perfect, you know, for us to – to win, and I shouldn't say almost perfect. We we need to play a really clean game, and we we certainly at times did that, and then it just reared its head uh, in in opportune times that you know ultimately affected the outcome of the game. I know we forgot to ask you about this last bit of with kind of your extension after your first season. What would that kind of mean for you to get that and get that done? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, it meant a lot. Uh, you know, coach has been um, coach B has just been extremely. Um, uh, you know he's been he's just been good to me over over the years, and not I'm not talking about from a contract standpoint, but just the way he has helped mentor me and get, uh, guide me and uh, empower me. And uh, he's obviously somebody I really enjoy working for and love this you know the university here and the program, the the, the culture, you know uh, the community. And so um, you know when when I was approached to, about that a few weeks ago, I was uh, you know very excited about, you know, the security involved in that and just the commitment, you know, uh, and more than anything, the commitment to, on both sides to say this is where I want to be and this is where this is where they want me to be and to help build this program on a consistent basis and a, and a yearly basis, and so that was important to me. Coach, the last couple of weeks, obviously, things have not gone as well as you would like. How much of that is the teams you're playing? How much is that is things you're maybe not doing quite as well as you'd like to be doing? Yeah, I think we start, talked at length about that yesterday with our players okay. and about, um, you know, I think we're at a point where um, I think we have enough talent. I think we have a, uh, enough um, grit and toughness that, you know, when we, when we do things the way we're capable of doing, we can move the ball and score points on whoever we play. Okay. And, um, but when we don't, you know the, the the margin of error is pretty pretty slim, and when you know when I don't put them in a good position uh, at times with play calls, and we don't execute the way they were capable of, then you know I think then you see the results of you know uh, you know punting and being three and out and those types of things. So There's a real real fine line there, and um, our effort and our intentionality to move the ball was there the whole game the other day. But there were certain series where it was much better than others. And uh, we made plays in some series, and, uh, and some we didn't. And um, and so I think it's a, co a combination of those things. I mean, obviously, the, you got good coaches you're going against with good players that they're going to rise up and make plays and stop you. But um, we've contributed that to a well as well as on our behalf of not doing the things we're capable of doing. Is there more in beginning of the year? Obviously, you got a great advantage because you know what you're going to be doing, yeah. and nobody else has any clue. Right. Is that kind of lessened quite a bit? Does that lessen over time in your experience? Did, you know, did, what you were able to do because it's kind of a surprise or whatever. Yeah, you I know, think well, early during doing? the year there oh, was yeah, of course, probably right. an element of surprise, and that's that's kind of you know gone gone away. Okay. Uh, so on the flip side of that, though, also there was an element of surprise for us too. Like we weren't really sure what we were going to see because we okay. didn't know what people were preparing for us. And so as the season's gone on, there's I think there's a on both ends of the spectrum of. You know, they may understand a little bit better about what we're trying to accomplish, but we certainly go into the game and understand what the defense is trying to accomplish. And so I think that kind of neutralizes that. I know you always want to get better. Are you, what's the level of satisfaction where you guys are at this point in their zero? Well, I'm pleased with the, I'm pleased with the effort and the, you know, which is just kind of the baseline standard, you know, right, to play in this program is you're going to play hard and you're, yeah. you're not going to be on the field if you don't play hard. But we, we play hard and our guys give a care. Um, their give a care meters st really strong. Okay. I mean, uh, they compete. They do what we ask them. So I'm really pleased with all those things. You know, the way that they take coaching and they try to apply it. Um, our job is to score one more point than the other team. And so uh, any amount of being pleased or you know happy with the way we move the ball at times and had some success is is very minimal compared to the disappointment that we've not done our job and our end to score enough points to help us win the last three weeks. Um, now you don't throw, you know, the proverbial don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, right. you know, in that regard. We don't want to sweep under the rug the good things that have shown up. Um, and and certainly Saturday, 
there was a lot of good things uh, that happened during the course of the game against a really quality opponent. Uh, we just got to do it more consistently. Barry, the, I'd say the last offensive possession, but the one that ultimately led to their field goal. How do you balance? I'm assuming you wanted them to use timeouts. You wanted to take as much of the clock versus maybe putting it in the air and, and picking up a couple that way. What was kind of the thought process? Well, on I think that the, the primary thought process was to get the first down, no matter you know what what it what it took from that standpoint. And uh, that point during the game, um, I think that you want Chase Brown to have a chance to impact the game uh, and. Um, we had run the ball fairly successfully during the course of the game, and um, and so uh, it was a little bit of a blend. The coach talked, the coach and I talked at length about it during the transition time, and um, had a plan that we knew we were going to need to throw the ball in uh, at least one of those downs, probably if we didn't get it, get it. And we had a plan to throw it on third down to get it to third and manageable, and to use one of the passes we believed in. And you know, ultimately we had a chance to end the game, you know, with two first downs there, and and then get the first one started. And and, and to be honest with you, the. The, the the penalty was a was a really tough one because of the the yardage that was lost you know in in the field position game and um, and so yeah the the thought process there's always about what you can do the best for the team you know and the best thing for the team is to get the first down um, uh, within reason you know you certainly didn't want to chunk the ball three times and have three incompletions uh, in a row and so um, you know hindsight's twenty twenty. I don't say that lightly, but you know, you, you always look back through those situations and say, what could we have done differently? And um, in the moment and the way the game was unfolded, we felt like the best op option early in that series was to give the ball to Chase. Um, and uh, you know, we just ended up coming up short on that. Can you highlight what you, what you got out of Chase on Saturday, maybe even not knowing when you woke up if he was going to be 100%? Yeah, I think, I think I was pretty confident that he was going to be close, you know, that he was going to be 100%. I think he knows himself well enough to know that position, you can't play hobbled. Right. And there's some positions you can get in there and, and mix it up. And, you know, like Tommy, his ankle has not been healthy at times and he's played. You know, you can get away with that, you know. Uh, but at that position, you can't. So I was pretty confident that he was fully ready to protect himself and play well. And, um, and I wasn't surprised at all to see him compete the way he did. I don't think any of us were that's followed him and the way he's played this year. And, um, and, you know, at, at times our line uh, really did a nice job of covering them up and uh, moving them. And um, so obviously the way he ran the ball um, was, uh, I don't know if it was expected, you know. Uh, we, we all come to the certain level of expectation with him, and, but it was certainly appreciated in, in the way he battled through the week to get ready to play. You may only have him for a couple more games. Just how much, if you appreciated what he's been able to do year one year with him. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, it's, and I told him this at, at, in the game the other day, you know, at the end of the game, just how, um, how appreciative uh, we, we all are, uh, and I am in particular as the leader of the offense, of his consistency. You know, it's always, um, it's always a, great, a great joy as a coach when you're your better players or your best player or whatever, you know, like when you're guys that are your, your dudes, uh, and obviously the way Chase has played, it's always a joy when not only are they your better players, but they're your best people too. Okay. And he's a phenomenal young man and leader. And I'm not saying he's any better person than any other any guys gotcha. that we have on our offense, but the fact that he does what he does and carries himself the way he carries himself on a daily basis uh, just speaks volumes about uh, the type of person he is. And um, but he's meant an, an, obviously an awful lot to our football team. And to have somebody consistently uh, break tackles and run and be gritty and protect the quarterback and do anything he can do to help us win the game. How would you describe Casey Washington? And it just seems like he catches anything that's targeted around him. Yeah, you know, I, I think Casey is. Uh, I think the arrow's up there with him for sure. Uh, we I felt that the last few weeks. I think uh, he's really. Uh, I think he's really turned the corner. Uh, not necessarily as a player, but I think just as. Maybe having a complete understanding and comfortable, uh, comfortable comfort level with what we're doing offensively. I know he's worked really hard at that, and George has spent a lot of extra time with him. And um, not that it requires extra time, but he he's really coming into his own. That's happened in practice. I really thought last week would be an opportunity for him to break out a little bit, and um, he did make a couple plays in the game against uh, Purdue. But really felt strongly, obviously with Pat being out last week, that Casey was thrust into a starting role and. And we view him as that type of player anyway. And, and, um, but he's strong and powerful, and he's tough, and he's competitive. And uh, those are all really good tra traits in a wide receiver. And I, I just, 
we need more from him. We need another day like he had the other day. And I think that's something that hopefully these two games that we guaranteed two games we have left, you know, that he can he can uh, produce in a similar fashion. What were your thoughts on the line? Seems like that was as good as we've seen them over the last two weeks. Is that fair? Do you think? Yeah, I thought would... they really rose to the occasion, played well. Um, I think they were confident going into the week, and um, you know, did and protected us. Mm -hmm. You know, protected the quarterback. I thought uh, extremely well. Um, and you know, from a start to start to finish type performance, I thought it was a, a very good one. There were some things to clean up. Obviously, we had a couple hiccups with. Even the crowd noise uh, that was extreme uh, at the end of the game that you know was was unfortunate, but um, but I just thought overall, um, you know, as a group collectively, they seem to be in unison, and um, they seem to uh, really you know cover the guys up. You know, uh, the, the big strong dudes from Michigan. You know, doesn't mean you're going to displace them and knock them five yards off the ball, but man, we were covering them and playing with good strain and allowed us to have some good run lanes. We always talk about Chase Brown and taking the pounding. Your quarterback's been probably played as much for this year as he has in a long time. You worry about him that way, taking a physical pounding. Although I guess he was pretty clean Saturday. Yeah, he was pretty clean Saturday, right. and there's going to be a few times. You know, we don't we don't try to put the ball in his hands a lot from right. a running game standpoint. It happens. You know, definitely it's going to happen a game or two, a play or two a game, and he's done a really good job when that's presented itself. Shoot him, his effort on that third down play the other day was, um, I went back and watched the film again. I mean, he almost got the first down, even though it had been called back. But just the competitive nature that he has, he doesn't back down from anybody or anything in that regard. And so um, we've been, you know, uh, fortunate to, for the most part, for him to stay healthy. Uh, and our line is in our backs, and shoot our backs did a nice job protecting him, that is our tight ends did. It takes a whole collective effort to protect a quarterback, receivers running the right route on time and, you know, all that. We've done a nice job in that regard. It's important we keep him clean on Saturday. Gary, when, when the news came about Coach being bomb on Thursday and he wasn't there, I'm just curious, how, how, does, how does that kind of a practice go when he's not there? And is for just one day, is it noticeable? Or, or did you guys get a good Thursday amount of work? Well, yeah, we got a good Thursday in. I mean, I, I think uh, you know, even to Coach's point, Thursday is probably the, the, one, uh, the one day that's probably um, – kind of self-regulated a little bit to some degree. I mean, like it's, uh, we have a very, very um, set routine on what Thursdays look like for us and our football team. And our guys through 10 weeks knew what that to be expected or what was to be expected. Um, I think it was a very somber practice because we knew that our, you know, our, our leader and our coach was hurting and going through a difficult time. And uh, our players had a, a little bit of time to digest that on Thursday morning before we went out to the field. But, um, and, but I think everybody knew, you know, had a heavy heart as we practiced. Um, but practice did go as kind of normal because of the way that this that's set, and it was kind of a normal routine for us. And the kind of the clock kind of manages the practice for us on Thursdays. And so, uh, even though coach wasn't out there, we did get. I thought we had a really good practice, a really focused practice. But nonetheless, was he was missed. You obviously working on Northwestern first and foremost, but you're going to have another game. Yeah. Do you look forward to maybe having a chance to kind of tweak some things between end of the season and bowl game? Yeah, that always gives you a little bit of time, you know, mixed in with recruiting to right. pause and, and figure out, like, is there some things, you know, that you can do that's unique mm -hmm. for the bowl game? A lot of it depends on who you play, you, play you know, right. what they what they present. But, um, you know, I think that's always a time you see in bowl time. You always see new, new wrinkles, you know, whether it's, you know, not necessarily for fun, but just for – you know, changing things up, and uh, you have a, a month to prepare and plan, so you have more time to be creative. And so, yeah, there'll be inevitably some things that pop up like that, I would believe, in a bowl game. They always have been every game I've ever been a part of in a bowl game that's showed up. Uh, but obviously our focus, focus is on Saturday playing a, um, you know, you turn the film on at Northwestern and, um, you know, you watch them play against Purdue on Saturday, and it's really impressive. I mean, you certainly wouldn't have um, – had any indication of what their current record is, okay. you know, based on the way that they play the game and the way they're coached and the way they compete. We'll have our hands full Saturday, and our guys will be ready to bounce back. You talked about those. You talked about that conversation you had with Brett, like during that transition period. And you've worked with them before. Obviously, a different title for you, and it's been documented has changed since the time. What What are those conversations like as you approach that? Not maybe that drive specifically, just those scenarios uh, going into that final drive you had. Like, what, what are those conversations like? You talking about on game day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we just we have a lot of conversations on game day. Yeah. You know, about two minute, four minute. We have a lot of those situations and those talks before the game ever comes about. And that's one thing that I appreciate about coach. He, 
Um, he, he really does a great job with, uh, with Ryan and I and Sean, the coordinators. You know, we, we, we meet with him pretty extensively before games to kind of make us think through those types of scenarios. And a lot of them end up unveiling a little differently just because of the way the flow of the game is going. Um, but, you know, from a time management standpoint and those types, of, there was some very, very clear open communication, just like there was the whole game leading up to that point and every other game that we played to this, to this point during the season. It's like, hey, what are we thinking here? You know, like, okay, they're going to use their timeouts. Like, okay, we need to try to get a good run here. You know, those types of things. So it's, uh, it, was, uh, uh, it was probably more general in nature, you know, because uh, he never, never gets involved, you know, from a standpoint. When I say never, I mean, seldom does he get involved to say, hey, I want to I wanna run here or a pass here. I mean, he, he leaves those up to my judgment and, uh, you know, my studying and my planning. Uh, but obviously, as always, has recommendations and things to think about, and does a great job helping me think through those things. Um, and so I, I greatly appreciate his his leadership in that regard because I think he really makes our football team better the way he goes about doing those.